Today I'm going to show you a few different ways you can actually color photographs in Photoshop with their black and white or maybe they've got existing color to them and you want to alter certain areas. I'm going to show you how you can do that with a few basic techniques that you might use entirely or simply mix up from photo to photo. So starting with this image, I'm going to start with the easiest and probably least precise way of doing it, but it is still pretty amazing and that is using a neural filter. So this black and white image I got from pexels.com. If I go up here to filter and neural filters, I can actually choose colorize. If I turn that on, it does a pretty amazing job of colorizing that photo straight off the bat. You could probably argue that it needs no more work done. But if you go down the right here, you can make some adjustments. So if I want to make this a little more sort of red than cyan, I can adjust that one way to warm it up a bit. Same with the yellowing, I can make it a bit more yellower if I want to. I can bring this right over to make it greener or more magenta. You can make some basic overall adjustments to it from there. And what I can do is I can hit OK and it'll export a layer with that fully colored image. Or if I hit output, it will create a new layer that looks like this. And when I apply the color blend to it, it actually colors the layer underneath. For now, I'm going to turn that off and we're just going to click OK. And this is the result of that neural filter from black and white to color. Next one is just simple paint and color blend layer. So I can do this with one layer, multiple layers, multiple layers probably safer, but let's say I want to change the color of the eyes in this photo. If I zoom in, I can add a new layer on the right here and I'm gonna call it eyes. And say her eyes are blue there, maybe I want them to be brown. So I'm gonna go over here to the left on my palette and choose, it's kind of like a brown color and at first this is gonna look horrible, but just to illustrate the point, I've got my brush selected. I'm gonna make sure my opacity is at 100, so I just get a nice strong paint, and I'm just gonna paint brown around that area. I hold down space, shift across, and I paint brown around that area again. So that looks pretty horrible because I've just painted brown on top, but with this layer selected, I change the blending option down to color, and it will actually affect the color. The color I've painted will affect the image underneath. So if I zoom out a little, I'm holding an alt and using my mouse wheel, you can see her eyes are brown. But maybe they're not quite the right color, so I can go into image, adjustments, hue saturation, and I can adjust the color left and right. I can make the pink if I want to. I can change that color. I can then adjust the saturation back or the darkness, the darkness won't have much of an impact, but it starts to look a little bit more natural here. And from there, I can again change that color. So we've got blue, we've got pink. Maybe we'll stick with pink because it's unnatural, but we can try and make it look a bit natural for the sake of the photo. And from there, we were able to affect that part of the photo. And again, if I grab red, I switch to red here and create a new layer for lipstick. I can also go ahead and paint the red onto there in the exact same fashion using color layer blend. And it looks pretty crazy because it's a very, very bright red that we're using. You sort of get the idea. It's very bright, but again, I can take this layer, I can check, take the opacity down and meet it sort of halfway. So I'm actually able to adjust those acute areas of the image with a new layer set to color blend using my paintbrush. Now the next is select and fill. If I move over to this image over here, one thing I can do is if I decide to add a neural layer, a neural filter, we get this result. The skin looks okay and certain areas of the image look a bit weird. The shirt's one color here and a different color down there. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna select an area, select certain areas and fix them up. So I'm gonna start off with the watch, mainly because this is a nice, quick, easy one. So now we're instead of painting onto these layers, we're gonna select, we can either select and paint or select and fill. We've got a few different options. I'm gonna click, click up here to my polygon lasso tool for the watch since it has a lot of straight edges and I'm just going to select, I click point. So as I move around, I click from point to point, to point, to point, and I'm able to create these straight lines. 
Now from there, I can create a new layer again as we did before. I can make it color. And if I want to, I can actually just go straight back to black and white. And as long as I make it black or white or gray, I can actually remove all of the color from that watch. And then of course, if I want to touch it up, I can choose maybe a, like a navy color and so hit the dial with that navy color. And then if I zoom out and hit Control D, the watch is looking a little bit more natural. But there's also a few other ways of doing this. There's other ways of selecting and then there's other ways of adjusting. So what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm going to select this shirt. We're gonna make it one color. But instead of using the polygon lasso tool, we've got some curves in here and other areas. So what I can do is I can actually use this pen tool here, zoom in, and similar to the polygon lasso tool, if I click, where I click next, it will create another point. But if I have held that down and not release it, I can move that around and curve it. Now keep in mind, I've actually got down here, I've got this at the top where it says shape. I'm gonna change that to path. And start again. So I'm gonna move, I click and I turn and hold to get this handle. I click again in certain areas until I can basically get these nice curved edges. Anywhere where the curve changes shape, just click and change, click and try to point it in the direction that it's going. You can also zoom out if I hold down Alt and use my mouse wheel, hold down Shift to move. You can be very, make much larger curves as well. And with a bit of practice, you'll get to the point where this is pretty easy. So I'm gonna go through and finish selecting the rest of this shirt. Now, one thing you'll notice if I zoom out now is I've selected the top half, but I still need to select the bottom half and they're completely disconnected. If I go here next to layers or over to paths or to window, you can turn paths on here. I've got my work path. I'm gonna simply click and start drawing again and it's added to that path. So now I've created my path. I want to actually hold down control, hover over the little uh, path preview there to make a selection. I come back to my layers and I can create a new layer and simply use color blend, but this time I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna go down the bottom here to this little circle that has the black and the white on it, which is an adjustment layer uh, sort of option. And I'm gonna to go to hue and saturation here. And what I can do, this won't necessarily work this time around because of the two different colors, but I can simply adjust the color back and forth if that's what I want to do if I'm using a different image. But because we've got two different colors, I'm going to hit colorize. And now the shirt is one color completely. I can still move this to change that color to whatever I think suits the image best, maybe like a green color. I can change the saturation, make it bright green, make it duller until I'm happy with it. Now you notice now, once I've done that, if I zoom in, I've still got a little bit of an edging around here. I can still click on this mask here next to this adjustment layer, grab my brush, and I can actually just touch that up with a little bit of white around the edge until it looks a bit more natural. Now you get the idea. Now the skin in that the skin in this is actually pretty good. Skin is quite hard because even if I pick a skin color, and I highly recommend getting another image to reference. So if you're having trouble picking a skin color, find someone with similar complexion, use the dropper and try to pick that skin color uh, and use that to color the skin. In this instance, I've actually got the mask selected so that hasn't worked. <laughs> but if I go back down to layer one here, that is the color image the skin color has disappeared in this section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to get the picker tool, sorry, this picker, make sure the sample size is set to three by three, and I'm actually just gonna select a part of the skin which is similar to that. So this is a great way if you've got a black and white image, find someone else with a similar skin color, a picture on the internet, doesn't matter if it's protected by copyright or not because you're not using the image, you're simply using it to reference the color the way I'm about to here. I click on that color and I get this brown color I can use. So I can again hit plus, add my color layer, and then draw that color in. And now he actually has a skin colored arm instead of a gray one. But the idea is you go through and you can use those three different methods. So you can use the neural filters 
and then you can use the color layer blend and just paint the color on or you can select and really you can either just paint within your selection or use hue and saturation adjustment layers any combination of these things will help you to color your image manually and of course um, it's always worth using a mixture of all these together i generally start with the neural filter as a base and then sort of color from there so that is the video for today hopefully it has helped you given you some idea on methods you can use to color photos um, photoshop is very powerful it's getting a lot easier back in the day we used to just color everything manually before they had the neural filters so that's a massive time saver so uh, i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please consider giving it a like if you did if you want more photoshop tutorials head to my channel check them out otherwise hope you have a great day and i'll see you again next time